I've always loved just going to a dumpster and finding an old computer, then just spending the weekend seeing what's on the hard drive, along with like playing with the computer, but most of all just seeing what's on the hard drive, old files and stuff like that. Well, now that I moved to Silicon Valley, basically I've come to a whole bigger dumpster and I'm finding so much cool stuff like this. This is a large full height hard drive. Cost me about $15 from Weird Stuff Warehouse. Uses a SCSI adapter, so it's probably from after 1986. And it runs off a regular 12 volt and 5 volt Molex connector. So we can just hook this into a modern computer with the help of a adapter card, such as this, which only cost me about three bucks. So I say, let's grab a computer, one of the random ones that happens to be in my landlord's garage, and install Ubuntu on it and test these out. We might find some pretty interesting stuff on this hard drive, if it works. Because that's the big question. With hard drives this old, most of them probably won't actually work. But, only one way to find out. So pretty simple. I'll just plug in the card. That should be good to go. And a SCSI connector to connect into it. Like so. Actually, this is kind of tight, so I'll just step this up with another hard drive. So evidently that SCSI card that I added has its own BIOS in here. Now, in order to get this thing to work correctly, I had to go into here, and I had to turn off the BIOS like override or whatever. I can't remember which one it was. But basically, what happened was the BIOS on the SCSI card was overriding the IDE card on the motherboard, so it was no longer booting from Windows. So that was kind of an issue. But this card actually has its onboard utilities, so you can actually scan the SCSI drives without any operating system on the computer. You can just use the BIOS in the card. Okay, so that so this drive is Fujitsu M2266-512. Verified disk media. And this will be a comp complete scan. This disk happens to be one gigabyte, which is actually a lot bigger than I expected. Usually whenever I've seen d drives like these, I've seen ones that are just like 10 or 20 megabytes, not a gigabyte. Oh, look at that. 100% complete. Now, I'm pretty happy with that. That means this drive is pretty much brand new. Let's restart it and go into Windows. Okay, so we're on Windows. Let's go to My Computer, right-click Manager or manage, but disk management. Okay, so it's reading the drive, but it's not detecting any partition on the drive, so that's some issue. So, so with Windows, we can't read anything from it. Say we restart and try to load up Linux. Well, that's weird. It's not coming up in the side. Because um, before, it was coming up down here. And by weird, I don't actually mean like it's doing something wrong. I mean like more like I may have accidentally formatted it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, that's definitely not the same partition as before. So, we've learned two things. One, sometimes the Ubuntu install disk, whenever you're trying to see if you can install on another hard drive, will accidentally wipe the wrong hard drive. Also, we've also found that the 
Ubuntu Live CD kind of sucks because it's really slow. Oh man, this is pretty warm. It's dissipating a lot of power, that's for sure. So, I accidentally formatted it. Now, this isn't as bad as it probably seems because let me just fill you in a little bit. If you ever see a video of mine where I take apart something or I show something but I act like it's the first time I'm doing something, most of the time, if it's not a random bits, usually I've already taken the thing apart. I've looked around it in a little bit and I've just kind of gotten a good idea of how I want to present it and I've gotten also an idea if, the, if there's anything in there that's going to kill me. Because taking something apart and filming at the same time is tedious and it usually doesn't result in a very good video. But if I already know what's inside something, then I can film a video and I can focus more on the filming bits. Well, with this drive, I already opened it up or not open it up, but I looked inside of it with a computer. I, I, I imaged the drive. I copied all the files off of it. I asked friend. I, I asked a bunch of friends about what 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 the files were doing or what kind of what was this being used for. And so pretty much, I didn't really lose anything. I just kind of screwed up the actual filming the video part. But I still have all the data and I have it archived on my computer. So, what was on this hard drive before I screwed up and accidentally formatted it with the Ubuntu install? Well, this had Sun OS on it. Sun Microsystems has, or I think at least had, an operating system for their mainframes called Sun OS. But then in 1994, they turned it into Solaris, I think. Or It may be incorrect to say that they turned it into. It may be that Solaris was a separate project that, that they stopped Sun OS and Solaris was already... They already had Solaris when Sun OS was around, but they just superseded it or whatever, or what the term would be. So I'm not I'm not, I'm not really sure on that. So it, it may be where it's like it went from Sun OS to, to Solaris, or it may just be two different operating systems where one stopped and one went past it quickly. But on here was a lot of interesting stuff. There was a lot of C code. So I'm thinking that this was owned by the University of... Uh, UC Berkeley, whatever, Berkeley University, I think it's around here, there's a town called, uh, there's a city, there's a part of the Bay Area called Berkeley, so I think, I think Berkeley's probably in there, I know Stanford's around here, so it's probably Berkeley around there, but either way, on here was a lot of folders and stuff labeled Berkeley, there was a lot of program code, code that was copyright of Berkeley University, and there was just a horrible mess of looks like little programming projects. So probably this is probably in a classroom and was used as just the main drive of a computer that people messed around with programming stuff on. Well, the interesting stuff though is that there actually were a couple folders full of sound files from about 1992 or so. And there were a couple weird folders. Like for instance, there's some games folders that have some game programs on them, but I think they only work with Sun OS, so I might see about getting a virtual machine for Sun OS and seeing if I can play those games. And there was other folders like Laserdisc, and it had a bunch of code where it looks like someone was trying to figure out how to read data from a Laserdisc or something like that, so it's like, that's pretty cool. I'm going to have to definitely dig through that, but the problem is it it's all just a bunch of random code that someone was making, so it's a lot of miscellaneous folders, but still, it's pretty cool. It's really, I'm really glad I got this. Now, for the actual hard drive itself, the hard drive itself is, well, let's see, a Fujitsu M2266SA. Now, the this Fujitsu drive was first released around 1991 or so, and I believe it had an initial price tag of, like, I can't remember what it was. I think it was about $5,000, which is quite a bit. And these are sold until about 1994 or so, because in 1994 you could get a one gigabyte drive for a small, I mean, the smaller form factor, similar to the ones that the, the average hard drives that we have in our desktops now. But yeah, this is pretty cool. Now it's actually started me thinking though, a gigabyte. This is a whole gigabyte here. That's actually pretty useful. I could possibly push myself to live off a computer that just had a gigabyte of memory. So I've been thinking about. I wonder if I could put like Windows 2000 or Windows 98 onto here and how long I could, I could stretch the capabilities of this. For instance, I would, I would want to surf the internet. I would want to 
render 3D models and like animate things. Now keep in mind I can have a new computer, just only a gigabyte hard drive from 1991. And now the biggest thing is I would like to edit YouTube videos on it. Now that's interesting to try to get that down to only a gigabyte of storage. So I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to allow myself to use the SD card on the camera. It's kind of cheating, but the thing is though, it's kind of the same way they would have done it back, or, or at least the same way I would have done it back then is if I had a VCR, I would have played the video off the VCR and changed it somehow in the computer if I did it through a computer because of course back then I, just, I would just like use VCRs to edit. But let's just say, imagine a VCR is like the the memory card in the camera. Well, I would, it's still be the same thing where I'd be, store, I'd be retrieving and storing it in an external data source, such as videotape. But except for in this instance, I'm recording it on an SD card and I'll be importing it into Adobe Premiere or something like that, editing it, rendering it and saving the export back on the SD card and then I can upload through the SD I, I can upload from the SD card to the internet that like through the computer if that makes sense but yeah that's just an interesting idea I love this hard drive I love this form factor and I love the sound well I say let's boot back up into Windows and format this just properly format it because right now it's kind of in a weird like I don't know what kind of format I'm using so let's put like fat 32 on it or something like that and see how it does just mess around with it I absolutely love how it starts up and then it, the speed ramps up super fast and tops out. I love how it just ramps up. I haven't heard many other hard drives do that. So once again we're gonna go to start, right click my computer, manage, disk management, it shows disk 2 as unallocated, new partition, ah, I should Hmm, let's see. Yeah, I'm thinking that'd be best. Primary partition, 1,028 megabytes. Hmm, let's go FAT32. The label will be Noah's Chunky Hard Drive. <laughs> oh darn. Let's just call it Chunky. There we go. Chunky. Because it's, it's a big chunky drive. Look at that! Formatted. Should come up with a drive. Oh, look at that. Chunky. And there is the contents of Chunky. Empty because it's formatted. Okay, let's do a benchmark now with Crystal Disk. Now we're doing the random access one. And there we go, there's the results of the test. Pretty interesting. In contrast, my new SSD gets about, I think, 500 instead of 2. That's a pretty big leap forward. But still, not as big of a leap as I would expect. 
2 megabytes isn't too bad, but the difference between the random access and the sequential is pretty big. It's an order of magnitude, actually. I think this thing definitely needs some cooling, because it's getting pretty toasty. So, to recap, this hard drive was found with the... Uh, I believe it's a bootable OS for Sun OS with some random programming crap on there. Probably left over from college kids learning how to program. It also had a few games and stuff like that, and a few sound clips. The hard drive itself is fully functional, and it's pretty cool. It's from about 1992 or so, and it might actually be usable in the future. I th think I may... Right, well, you know, actually it's a little too big. One of these hard drives, I'm looking for a hard drive that's not too big, because if it was big enough like this one, I could actually use it here for something, just, just for whatever. But if I find a small one, maybe 200 megabytes or so, I'll take that home to Illinois and put it, put it into my original IBM PC, because that one's, the hard drive on that one's dead, so that'd be nice to have a hard drive on that finally. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. See ya!